unless we are involved in landscaping or in construction or even in gardening, the term level ground may have a different meaning for us. For some of us, it carries with it the idea of stability, of uh, reliability, of honesty in our lives, of balance, of peace, or even of truth. And as we come to Psalm 26, that is the focus of the psalmist David. Because though the people around him were trying to find fault with him, and uh, they, were, they were slandering him, and they were falsely accusing him of sin and, and of compromise, just watching and waiting for him to fall. He didn't overreact to them. He remained calm. He stayed on level ground. And he continued to do what was right before the Lord. He continued to have a clear conscience in regard uh, to the integrity of his actions. In regard to the, the purity and the sincerity of his life. And perhaps there is a lesson uh, for us to learn here. And so, beginning in verse 1 of Psalm 26, the psalmist makes an appeal. He makes his appeal to God for help. And he says, Vindicate me. O oh Lord, Safa in Hebrew, search my heart. Let your justice measure my life, not the injustices of man. Weigh my life on the scales and see where I fall short. For though I have failed, miserably along the way. Lord, still, you know my heart. You know it even better than I know it. You know that I have walked in my integrity, Tom, in Hebrew, in uprightness. And I've trusted in you, Lord, without wavering, he says, Mahan in Hebrew without slipping and falling and turning away from you. My safety and my security are found in you alone because my life is guided by you, Lord. For I know you will fulfill your plan for me, for my life. So why should I seek revenge? against my enemies when you've promised to protect me. So I will walk on the level ground of your will for me, on the level ground of your word to me. Examine me, O Lord, the psalmist says in verse 2. Baham in Hebrew. Take a long, hard look at me and see if I'm genuine. See if I am real. Try me, he says. Nasa in Hebrew. Put me in the fire of affliction, if that's where I must be. And in my difficulty, test my mind my motives, test my heart, my desires, and refine me, and remove 
the impurity of sin from my life. For who can stand before the fire of your justice? But Lord, I know you are a God of great mercy. And I can testify that in all of the days of my life, your loving kindness has said in Hebrew, your unchanging love to me has been before my eyes. So I will continue to entrust myself to you. For I have walked on the level ground of your truth, emeth in Hebrew, of your faithfulness to me. I have not had fellowship with the wicked, the psalmist says in verse 3, with the enemies of God. I do not sit with deceitful men, shav in Hebrew, with empty-headed men and women who only care about what is worthless, what has no eternal value. Nor do I go about with pretenders, he says in verse 4, alem in Hebrew, with hypocrites, those who conceal who they really are behind the mask of their lives. I hate the assembly, kahel in Hebrew, the company of the crowd of evildoers, David says in verse 5. Raeh, those who act wickedly and do harm and who bring disaster upon others and who lead others away from God along with them. And he adds, I will not even sit at the same table with the wicked and enjoy their company. It would be better for me to sit with those who know that they're lost in their sin and who know that they have a need for forgiveness. So David tells us in verse 6, I will wash my hands in innocence. I will separate myself from the enemies of God, but I will not isolate myself from them so that I might reach them with the truth. But at the same time, I will not participate or condone their evil ways. I will not keep silent. And so with a clear conscience and with a cleansed life, a life cleansed by God, a life that has been cleansed by the blood of Christ. I will go about your altar, O Lord, coming to you in worship and in praise that I might proclaim the glory of your name, it says with a voice of thanksgiving. Let them all snarl and growl at me like wild animals with a voice of hatred. Still, I will declare all of your wonders. I'll declare all of your mighty deeds. I will never cease to declare your mercy to me, no matter what happens to me. I will not keep silent. O oh Lord, he says in verse 8, I dearly love the habitation of your house, Mahom in Hebrew. I love to be in your presence with the people of God, the place where your glory and your, your majesty dwells. O Lord, David cries out in verse 9, do not take my soul away into eternity along with sinners who will not turn away from their sin and turn to you for forgiveness. Do not number my life with men whose lives are full of bloodshed, whose hands are full of wicked schemes 
in order to bring about destruction and hurt and disgrace to your name. And who with great skill and cunning in their right hand offer bribes. They distort justice and they distort the truth in order to satisfy themselves, in order to bring about their own well-being, their own gain, while at the same time claiming to be religious. But as for me, David says in verse 11, I will walk in my integrity. I'll walk in uprightness of heart and in truthfulness. Redeem me, Pade, in Hebrew. Rescue me, Lord. Be gracious to me. For a flood of evil men continues to sweep over me. But by your grace, he says in verse 12, my foot continues to stand firm in a level place on level ground, so that I might testify of you and of your work in my life. So in the congregations of your people, I will bless you, Lord. I will praise your holy name forever in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. You've been listening to Bruce David Bell, pastor of Berean Bible Fellowship. If the Lord has ministered to you through this message and you would like more information, then visit us on the web at bbfva.org.